My name is Scott DIY and welcome to my first YouTube video and welcome to my mess of a garden. You might know me from Instagram and TikTok where I built the extension behind me with no experience. This is the first of a series of videos which is going to show the transformation of my garden. I hope it keeps you entertained, but I also hope you can learn from the things that I'm doing here to help you find the information that you need for your project. I'm just going to explain quickly at the start of every video what it is that I'm going to be doing in the video. I'm showing you how I've dug the trenches for the planters which are going to be at the side and what mix I used to do it and then finally leveling off the concrete mix that I've poured into those trenches ready to take the walls which will one day eventually be steps and planters at the side. So without further ado I have been setting out the levels for the patio and the retaining wall and I don't have the materials or the tools that the professionals have so I've made do with some wood and a spirit level. As you can see I've got my blocks there which will be the retaining wall and this is my little contraption that's going to help me get the right level on the patio once it's all finished will act, the underside will act as the new level of the patio. I'm just going to take it to halfway up a common concrete brick right there. And this spirit level on top is showing level. And it's showing level because I have a 10 mil piece of OSB underneath it. That OSB gives me the fall that I want for my patio which is roughly 1 in 80 which is what's advised so providing that that fall is right and my wood is in the right position this is the gap between where the top of the retaining wall will end up now obviously these blocks have no mortar in between so you can set the average gauge at, at 10 mil which will bring this up pretty close to the bottom of that wood. So I'm happy with that. Don't mind a slightly increased fall on my patio. It's only gonna help with water drainage anyway. I've been working on the footings. So this is an original wall. I don't know how long it's been here probably since the house was built and I've just dug next to it and found the original footings and I'm going to be putting in new footings just here which is going to basically allow me to do a double skin wall so we're going to have double skin there and a double skin wall here obviously no cavity steps in the middle and then over here I've just done a little bit more digging as well for this footing so I can get this side of the planter in. That's a, uh, a nice width for a footing. You can easily get two rows of, of brick in here. I'm using imperial bricks with the standard metric block which doesn't make this project any easier so I'm trying to save on some materials uh, by using the old brick that I've got in the garden and I think the only way I'm going to be able to use both is to use some sort of wall tie on the blocks and you can see I've got the retaining block wall at the back I've got the imperial bricks on the top and I've laid them out this way because that's what is going to be seen after each tread of each step so I need to make sure that the heights line up really well and because these are imperial brick and those are block 
in, in, in metric, that's going to be really difficult. But after a bit of research online, the usual step in a garden is around 15 centimeters rise, and that's the that's just the depth of the step. Um, and in order to get my steps to fit within the space that I've got the footings for, I'm going to have to have around 20 centimeters. It would have been nice to have exactly 15, just as it's recommended online. So that's the reason why I was so keen to get this block work wall set out as it is, because this will be the width of the first tread from there all the way to there, which is for 40 mil. And then there's gonna be a, a gap of another 440 and then another 440. And it only just fits. Okay, so now all the trenches are dug, it's time to get a mix on. I'm gonna be doing six part ballast to one part cement. That should give me a real hard mix when it's all done. So we've got a mix on the go, but just as I put a mix on, just look at that sky. The sky has gone so gray, <laughs> which just means that I need to cover it up if it starts raining, but it's typical. It's been sunny all morning and now it's gone gray. So this is the mix behind me. Let's have a quick look at that. That's shaping up quite nicely might just need a little bit more water but that's what's going to be going in these benches So the first trench is done, let's take a quick look, and there it is, all I've done is tamp it down with a piece of wood to make it nice and compact and also level with each piece. Just before I let it go off I'm just going to make sure that a spirit level, I'm going to put a spirit level across the top and make sure it's really nice and level, which will make brickwork a lot easier. Now time to fill this in. Okay, so we are getting close to finishing the footings. I just need to tamp it down and see if we need to bring the level up. So it's taken quite a few hours longer than I thought it would do, but the concrete is in and now it's time to check if it's level. All you do is just bed your level down onto the, onto the concrete and then see how 
level you've got it, so... So it has been a few days since we laid the foundations of the steps and the planters and it's time to put a spirit level on them to make sure that they are nice and level. So I have my trusty level right here, Ox Pro. I wish I had an affiliation with these guys, but unfortunately not. So let's get this down on the footings. This is, this is the moment of truth and we'll see if it's nice and level. Okay. So that's laying across my foundations. And let's have a look at that bubble. I'll wait for the camera to focus. I would say that's about as good as you're gonna get. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. And I'm really looking forward to starting the brickwork. And with that, that is part one of the garden project complete. Like I said at the beginning, this is a huge project and it's gonna have many parts to it. It's so there's gonna be twists and turns for you guys to follow. And hopefully that keeps you entertained. I know it's gonna be keeping me entertained, uh, but hopefully as well, you can learn something from what I'm doing here. It, again, it's helping DIYers who don't have all of the tools or the skills or the knowledge to do things for themselves. Thanks for watching, guys.